Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ntwani Ngomani. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Welcome to another video. I hope you guys are well. First of all, housekeeping. Guys, if you have not subscribed, please click the red subscribe button below. It is absolutely free and I know I say this on all the videos, but it really does help grow the channel. It really does help with the algorithm suggesting this video. Basically, what it means is if you like this video, if you subscribe, um to the channel it recommends the video more and more to people who need to hear it so please do take a moment check if you're subscribed if you haven't please do click the red subscribe button down below so today's video is quite interesting and i want us to unpack a little bit of what happened in the past week in the uk if you're not obviously um not familiar with like news in the uk and what's happening um so in the last week there's been a discussion in the house of commons about um a new new requirements basically that are being proposed that will affect immigration law or that will amend immigration law if they're actually adopted and there are some parts of those suggestions or those points that were mentioned that just ticked off people in the wrong way in fact I also felt like it was a bit unfair but I want to unpack that and I want to unpack it in the context of our industry in what we do obviously it does affect a lot more people because if they change immigration law it's not just our industry that's changing it's not just chartered accountants and ca trainees that work in the uk there's a whole lot of other industries um you know or that that basically import labor into the uk so it basically affects everyone but for the purposes of this video and because we are in the accounting and the auditing space and i will speak specifically about things that will affect us right in the last week um it was uh, the, they they basically um tabled a list of changes that they're going to propose be made to the immigration law starting in the spring of 2024 um spring in the uk is around march may March, April, May, somewhere around there. So it's not effective now. It's not even adopted yet. They're still going to finalize. And obviously, if they do decide to adopt it, then it will become part of the immigration law or policy of the UK. But the first thing that I want to start about is they proposed that in order to qualify for a skilled workers visa, which is what a lot of people are on when they're working in the UK, um, they decided to change the requirement um, that for you to qualify for a skilled workers visa, you need to earn a certain amount of money. I can't remember what it is, but I'll leave it on the screen somewhere. You need to earn that amount of money as a minimum as your annual salary right so the, now they increasing that minimum amount to now 38,700 pounds so basically for you to qualify for a skilled workers visa under this new proposed amendment you have to earn 38,700 guys the median salary in London is around 30,000 between 28 between 28 and 30,000. I'll leave it in the screen somewhere to be sure. But it is nowhere near 38,700. Basically, what that means is this new proposed amendment cut off a lot of immigrants, a lot of people who are working in the UK. If they do not meet that 38,700, then they cannot be given a skilled workers visa and so they cannot work in the UK. That's the first thing. How does this affect us in our industry as CAs or in the accounting space and in the auditing space in the UK? Basically, for me, this I'm not very worried about um, qualified CAs in the UK because a lot of them in these um, companies and finance departments or auditing space or whatever space you're in, you probably earn more than 38,700. So you would meet that requirement anyway. However, there are trainees that are coming from South Africa in the SICA program. There are also trainees that work in the UK under the ACCA program who do not earn 38,700 pounds. I'll speak specifically for CA trainees coming from South Africa because I know they will then need a skilled workers visa to be able to complete their articles, right? The thing is, if they don't meet 38,700 per annum, they cannot qualify for a skilled workers visa. 
now my question is and you can leave your thoughts in the comments do you think audit firms will be looking to increase trainee salaries from whatever they are now to £38,700 in order to meet the skilled workers visa and so import more skill and more talent to come and service the auditing space in the UK or do you think they will abolish the whole psycho traineeship altogether just because it's getting more and more expensive to import immigrants in the UK? I don't know what's going to happen, but basically that's what it means. It basically means that audit firms are either going to increase the minimum salary for first year trainees fresh out of uni, no experience to 38700 or they're just going to abolish the whole psycho um, articles thing abroad altogether. I don't know what they will decide, but looking at the current situation now, I don't think they'll be willing to pay first year trainees almost £40,000 per annum. I could be wrong. The second thing that I feel um, is, is going to affect us is one of the other points that was raised there was the fact that they want to increase the immigration, not the immigration, they want to increase the national insurance um, health surcharge that you pay as part of applying for a skilled workers visa. And they want to increase that by 66% from I think 600 odd pounds to over a thousand pounds. I'll put the real numbers on the screen. I can't remember them off by head. But basically what that means is if you got a job in the UK and they have to sponsor your visa, they now will not only just have to pay 600 pounds. You actually are the one who pay it. You don't just have to pay 600 pounds for the, for the health uh, surcharge. You now have to pay over a thousand pounds. That means it's becoming 66% more expensive to hire foreign labor in the UK. And the effect of that, especially if you work in the UK, you will know that a lot of companies in our industry have clawbacks in their contracts. So basically what that means is you have to work for this company for a certain amount of time. Um, before you can leave and not have to pay back the visa cost that they incurred for you to be here what that means basically is it's gonna get so the amount of money that you would have to pay if you live within that period is gonna be way higher it's gonna be 66.6 percent .6 higher because they're now incurring more cost for you to work in the uk and what that means is if you're in the uk and you decide listen or this audit job that I came through is not for me and your clawback period has not ended it basically means you have to pay back a lot more money in order to get out of that contract alternatively I think what's gonna start happening and I mean I could be wrong but it's just my own thinking is that companies are just gonna increase the clawback period like if the clawback period used to be two years they're probably gonna increase to three years so now if you're coming from South Africa to work in an audit job you're probably gonna have to stay three years just so you don't pay back that visa cost because it's gonna be a lot more money and so they will just elongate the period so people stay longer I mean it also makes sense from a business perspective if I'm going to incur a thousand pounds for you to be here I will want you to be here for a longer period so I can get back value for my money but that affects people who are coming into the UK through audit jobs and they know they don't want to be auditors um, I think it's gonna be very very chaotic um, and that's why I'm doing this video to say guys think about this decision very well if you're planning to come to the UK in the next year um, or in the next 18 months and these rules could affect you think about that decision very well if you're not planning to be in audit in the for the next three to five years please consider thinking about that decision very well because the amount of money you will owe if you do live within the clawback period will be a lot of money people get into debt people currently are paying around four thousand pounds if they live within their clawback period that will be 66.6 .6 percent higher in the next spring basically in the next six months so that's another way that these changes could affect us um, as CAs working abroad I think the last thing and I must mention that this is not just 
um, for for our industry but I feel for the healthcare workers in this country um, because basically one of the other suggestions is that um, they want to prevent basically abolish um, the opportunity for healthcare workers to bring their dependents into the UK so basically their argument is that there are healthcare workers that are coming and applying uh, to get a visa to work in the healthcare sector in the UK. And when they're here, they have the opportunity currently to bring their dependents, right? And they are bringing their dependents. But their argument, the UK government, is that these people are then putting a strain on public funds. First of all, if you're an immigrant in the UK, you have a little BRP card that you get, which is your residence permit. At the back of that card, it specifically says you do not get any benefit from public funds. Basically, you do not qualify to get public funds. You are prohibited from getting public funds. So I don't understand. I don't understand how if I'm on a visa that prevents me from benefiting from public funds and prevents every other dependent that I have from benefiting from public funds, how can you go on and say we are putting a strain on the public funds in the UK. For me, makes zero sense. However, the suggestion is that healthcare workers can come to the UK, but they are abolishing the opportunity for them to bring their dependents. That means if you're coming to the UK to work in healthcare, if these suggestions are actually put into law, you cannot bring your spouse, you cannot bring your kids, you cannot bring your mom, you cannot bring your dad, you cannot bring your sister, you cannot bring anybody they just want you for me that is manipulative <laughs> for me that is manipulative and i know um it probably doesn't seem like oh my god it doesn't affect you a lot but i feel like at some point every other immigrant who is in the uk working will not be able to bring dependents how do they expect how do they expect people to come and work in a country but they cannot bring their family for me that makes zero sense if i'm gonna put in sweat and tears and effort and skill into growing the uk economy i'm gonna have my support system with me i need to be able to bring my family with me and bring my dependents imagine mothers who have children who can't bring their children to the uk because of it's just totally unfair and this last point might seem like it does not really affect you but think about it if you are in the uk and you plan to stay here at some point it might affect you if you plan on bringing dependents so those are some of the things that have happened over the last week that I feel have an effect on on us but specifically the CA guys the trainees especially I know how exciting it sounds to be coming here to do your articles I know how how nice it sounds to come here to like further your career after you've qualified but think about these things. Another thing that I think will be very, very important is for CAs who are here who are looking to jump out of audit and into other roles. It's going to be even more difficult to get visa sponsorship because of these additional costs, because of these additional restrictions and additional rules that the UK government is suggesting be implemented for immigrants. I know they are trying to cut down on um, net migration in the UK. The numbers are high. There's a lot of people coming in. But also they need to understand that the UK economy is held by immigrant labor. It is, Guys, there's so much shortage of skill in the UK. People in the UK just don't want to do these jobs especially healthcare jobs there's a lot of schools that provide nursing classes at discounted rates but the population in the country is just not taking up that job they just there is not enough skill in the UK the whole economy in the UK is held up by immigrant labor and for me it's just absurd that they've just made it more and more difficult for immigrants to come and thrive in this economy that they also contributing to so yeah I know this video was probably too technical um, it was probably very um, hi not high level but like it was probably too technical um, especially if you're not um, well vested in you know the UK economy and what's happening in current affairs in the UK but this has sprung up a lot of conversation in office buildings and corridors and especially because <laughs> guys 
in most office spaces right in most office spaces in the uk more than 50 percent who work there are immigrants so we are going to talk about it it does affect us it does affect our future in this country so yeah man i hope this video helps somebody if you are coming to the uk next year please guys take a moment and think about that decision look up these laws look up what they mean for you ask people who are in the uk ask them how they think this will affect their stay how it will affect their job hunting outside like because a lot of us come here and we want we come here through audit but we also want to get out but getting out of audit means getting a visa sponsorship and if visa sponsorship is getting expensive who would want to sponsor it like there's a lot of things to think about so i hope this video helps somebody um but yeah let me know down in the comment section if you think the psycho articles thing in the uk is gonna go on after this i i don't know i don't know if audit firms will be willing to pay around forty thousand pounds for a fresh university graduate uh, to just come and do articles men maybe they will because obviously they, there will be shortage of skill but i also think what will start happening is they will start recruiting qualified cas to come and do audit training work which is another thing we need to actually talk about but video for another day let me know in the comments down below i love you guys i will see you in the next video hopefully in the next video i will be in south africa by then but yeah see you next time bye